Um, okay, so we've, we were told by um, students that they would like to hear, particularly during the beginnings of uh, the semester when you're still trying to learn about your or decide on your uh, uh, seminar topics, that the students would like to hear more from their own faculty. And so uh, apparently we haven't been holding up our end of the deal and I somehow got uh, nominated to do this first. Um, so I'm going to tell you a little bit, and what they wanted to hear is about our programs, our own research programs, is the word we got. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about uh, the research program that uh, you know, myself and Rekka and Kendra and some others are involved with, and, um, and, and give you a sense of what we're doing at least in terms of the um, uh, simulations and, and uh, data analyses kinds of things that we're uh, trying to develop. Uh, there's another piece to all this that I will just mention in passing here, and that has to do with uh, as we figure these things out um, using simulation models, uh, what we've been doing is trying to develop a model system and the model system uh, consists of, uh, you know, something that can go from seed to seed in only about 40 days. I don't like Arabidopsis for that because it's awfully hard to cross the darn thing. So I want a system that is easy to cross and that I can have undergraduates work on. But I'll just mention that to you for right now. We're sort of busy working on that and we've uh, narrowed it down to a couple of species. Um, uh, one of them is monkey flower and the other one is Brassica rapa or some of you may know it as fast plants. So those, those are a couple uh, species that a lot of what we do here in the computer, we are uh, beginning to see if our uh, models that we do in the computer need to be updated or fixed in order to really deal with real biological systems. So um, the people here that really need uh, a fair amount of uh, credit for this uh, include Li Ji Wang, and Bao Hong Guo. Bao Hong has just gone to work for uh, Syngenta. He was a postdoc and um, Li Ji is a, an assistant professor in the um, Department of Industrial Manufacturing Systems Engineering. Uh, what I want you all to do is to start thinking about plant breeding not so much as art and science but start thinking about it as as engineering. Okay, So that's kind of the my bias, that's where my perspective is coming on this. Feel free to answer, ask questions along the way. Uh, one of the things that you do as you pre start preparing your seminars, you'll, you'll stand up here like I am now and you'll be nervous. And one of the things to get around that is to just sort of chat with people for a minute or two like I've just been doing. Okay, sort of get some of that, uh, that adrenaline out of the system before you really start charging into it. So the other thing that uh, is often good to do is to um, present to your audience um, an outline so that they sort of know where you're going, okay? And so that's what this is here. I'm, and, and the other piece of all this is uh, often if you don't really know uh, the common understanding that your audience has in terms of background, it's often good to go ahead and state that, okay? Go ahead and just say what are the fundamentals upon which I've built all of this? And I'll do that here in a minute because those fundamentals, uh, it turns out, um, can be challenged and they may be wrong. Um, then, then what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about four genetic approaches to genetic discovery. And, and this is largely work done by Bao Hong Guo. And then uh, once we make the discoveries, how do we use those in plant breeding? And there's uh, you know, sort of a number of ways that we'll do, do there. Uh, we'll tend to focus here and here in these methods. So let's talk about the important assumptions here, okay? So there's this guy named Mendel who was running around a while ago and uh, he ran some experiments and he said there are these inherited characteristics. He didn't call them genes, a guy named Johansson called them genes. But anyway, there are these, dis these discrete elements that are inherited and we call those things genes. They somehow affect the phenotype. The second uh, part of this uh, comes out of Fisher, who did a synthesis and said, well, you know, these discrete characters are just kind of special cases of quantitative characteristics 
uh, in the sense that actually we're not dealing with a single uh, gene that we're inheriting, but maybe we're inheriting multiple genes where each one of those is contributing a small amount to the total variability of the character. Okay, And maybe each one of these um, discrete classes has a little bit of error in the evaluation of them, so you end up with sort of continuous characters. So these were, this is stuff has been around a long time. Uh, Morgan said that these genes are arranged in linear orders, in a linear order along chromosomes, like beads on a string. Okay, so that's another fundamental assumption I'm making here. Pete Peterson's in the back, and he may tell us, uh, as you say, uh, that those, Peter? Uh-huh. Yep. If which was bigger now? Which was bigger? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. The font was bigger. The font was bigger. Oh, okay. So the font is not big enough here. Okay, good, good. That uh, I haven't. I didn't come in this room and and check that out from the back. Thanks, Peter. So yeah, as as you all do that, make sure that you know people can read these things. Good point. And then lastly, um, there's an assumption that. Uh, these genes have different uh, variants, and we refer to them as alleles. So the forward genetic approaches, and there's also a thing called reverse genetic approaches, I'm not going to go into that, uh, that typically have been used are things like, uh, that are referred to as uh, sometimes QTL mapping or linkage mapping, association mapping, or sometimes it's called linkage disequilibrium mapping. I'm, I'm still not quite clear why, because really what you want to do is get rid of the linkage. Uh, and then there's a, a whole series of methods that are emerging that have to do with uh, combining linkage and linkage disequilibrium mapping. And these combinations are done for a number of reasons. The one that most people are most recently familiar with is called nested association mapping. And that's where we've spent a fair amount of time in the last two years is trying to characterize nested association mapping to find out whether or not uh, it's all it's cracked up to be. Okay, so let's just talk about uh, linkage mapping briefly. Uh, this is pretty simple stuff. Um, we look for statistical associations between some sort of marker that may be segregating in a uh, uh, family, and then uh, that statistical association is associated with a trait that you know has some. In this case here, it's associated with this marker C. Uh, these these homozygotes tend to be associated with this uh, larger value trait and these homozygotes with the lower value trait and the heterozygotes with the intermediate value of the trait. Pretty simple stuff, but that's you know, just fundamentally what QTL mapping is all about. So within uh, delineated uh, QTL regions, what we find out is so if we look at a chromosome, we can uh, create a heat map and say wherever there's these red things, we're seeing strong statistical associations. And within those red regions, what we typically will find is that um, there's lots of candidate genes in that region. Um, and if we look within one of those candidate genes, we'll find that there's a lot of SNPs in, in this particular one. So these are polymorphisms, single nucleotide polymorphisms, uh, that exist within this candidate gene uh, on the order of several thousand. And if we look within uh, a particular area of that um, gene, of that uh, amplicon, we'll find we can actually look at the sequences and see the individual single nucleotide polymorphisms that exist at these points. So this is a sort of a resolution uh, issue here and you just have to be able to drill down through things. Thank you for watching the Agronomist podcast. YouTube limits video links to 10 minutes. You can watch this seminar in its entirety at the Department of Agronomy website www.agron.iastate.edu